Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Z and you're watching Dr. Z PhD, the place to be for expert info on gender. Today I would like to discuss medical transition for trans women or non-binary people more in detail. Now before we start, I'd like to point out that I'm not a medical doctor. I have a doctorate degree in clinical psychology, not in medicine. If you are on hormones or plan on starting hormones, you need to discuss your goals and options with a medical doctor. The information I'm sharing with you is intended to inform you. I'm also drawing from over a decade of personal experience in working with transgender and gender diverse people. Also make sure you subscribe to my channel so that way you don't miss any new content coming from me. All right, let's discuss medical transition also known as hormone transition. Keep in mind surgical transition will be talked in detail in my future videos. For today I want to discuss what medical intervention is involved in hormone transition. There will also be a future video discussing four areas where you can expect changes to take place on hormones. Let's begin. For starters, let's be clear that hormones are not for everyone. It's not mandatory to be on HRT in order to transition. However, if your goal is to feminize physically as much as you can, hormones may be an option for you. So if you plan on thinking of, about starting hormones, most likely your doctor will put you on a regimen. And depending on your age, your health, and your transition goals, regimen will look different for each individual. Generally speaking, hormone therapy for trans women may include three different kinds of medicine, estrogen, testosterone blockers, and progesterone. Estrogen is a hormone responsible for most female characteristics. It causes the physical changes of transition as well as psychological or emotional changes one can experience. Estrogen can be given as a pill, by injection, as a patch or cream, or as a palate. Pills generally tend to be seen more as convenient and cost-effective ways, however, they may not be a safest choice for people with certain health concerns. Patches and creams are safe, but there is consensus in trans community that they're not as effective. Injections of estrogen seem to be very popular in trans community. Now again, I'm not a medical doctor, however, I have personally observed injections as the best route of administration. This is by listening to many self-reported accounts of how people felt and changes they have experienced once they switch from pill to injections. Many medical doctors consider community consensus that injections are better as anecdotal. And yet one can also disregard overwhelming majority of trans women saying injections are better than pills or patches. I also wrote a blog on debunking the myths related to injections and I encourage you to take a look at it. It's linked in the video description below. Now, another route of administration that is becoming very popular are pellets. Pellets are small, teeny compounds that are placed under the skin. It allows delivery of a small amount of hormone into the bloodstream, and usually a pellet can last on average about three to six months. Pellets are especially popular among people who are afraid of needles, or in general with people who tend to forget to take their estrogen dose. The problem with pellets is that not all doctors tend to do it, also insurance may not cover it, and the cost can be expensive. Now, many people tend to believe that the higher a dose of estrogen, the sooner they will have experienced physical changes. But remember, taking high dose doesn't necessarily make changes happen quicker. In fact, it can endanger your health. Often, it's less about the dose and more about how your body tends to metabolize it. And that varies drastically from person to person and includes factors such as your health and age. So chasing numbers of other people won't really help you. Best is to find out what works the most for your body. Now, along with estrogen, testosterone blockers are often also prescribed. And there are a number of medicines that can block testosterone and tend to fall into two categories. Those that block the action of testosterone in your body and those that, pre that prevent the production of testosterone in your body. Currently in the US, the general T blocker tend to be spirolactone or spire. Now again, there is a mutual general consensus in trans community about numerous negative effects of spire. And I have also written a blog post about it, so I encourage you to read it. It's also linked below. There's also mutual consensus in trans communities that taking estrogen via injection should be enough to suppress levels of testosterone without a need for T-blocker. Again, all of this is considered anecdotal and yet majority of people self-report it. So I'll let you decide. In place of spiral, some doctors are beginning to prescribe luprolide or baclutamine. However, again, insurance may not offer coverage for this medication and they can add up being costly. 
Not to mention many doctors won't prescribe this option for personal reasons. Finasteride and dutasteride are also medicines often used as tea blockers. Again, all of this will depend on your doctor, how knowledgeable your doctor is in trans medicine, and how much they can think outside of the box. If you are in California, I can't say enough good things about Dr. Kristin Virieger or Dr. V from Metamorphosis Clinic. See a link below for her page. And lastly, let's talk about progesterone, which can be taken as a pill or applied as a cream. Very important to keep in mind that it has to be bioidentical form of progesterone. Progesterone is a drug that, is, that uh, receives an ongoing debate in trans community and among providers. And I have also written a blog post about the benefits of progesterone, citing a research medical article, also linked below. Many trans women claim great benefits from progesterone, such as improved mood and sexual drive, enhanced energy, and better breast development and better body fat redistribution. Again, while there is general consensus in trans community on benefits of progesterone, many doctors won't prescribe it. This is due to a lack of research into trans health. So think about you know, all of the options. Make sure if you do plan to start hormones and go on hormones, make sure you discuss all of the things with your doctor. Again, all this intended for you to be as educated as possible. If you are on hormones and would like to share your experience, what seems to work for you, please comment below. I'd love to hear your experience. And if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing.